Hello and welcome to New Start at Home. I'm your host, Don McIntosh. We're glad you're with us today, and I'm glad that Rich Kallenberg is in the studio with us. Welcome, Rich. Hi, Don. Now, you're here. What are you here to talk about? Here to talk about addictions. And you have some experience. I have a little experience. I was uh, an, ad an addict for oh, about 25 years of my life. I used and abused just about every kind of drug or substance that there was. Okay. Well, you know, all things work together for good. In other words, the Lord can use that. I'm glad you're willing to come and talk about it. And I'm glad you're still alive because a lot of people that get into addictions, they, you know, they don't make it. So I'm glad you're here. What is an addiction? An addiction is a habit that controls you, mm. that you don't control, but it controls you. Now, you know, when you, we were talking, you said there's two different types of addictions. Yeah, there's two different types. There's substance addiction, which would be drugs, alcohol, coffee, cigarettes, mm -hmm. and then there's behavioral addictions, and behavioral addictions would fall, you would have jealousy, anger, sexual addictions, gambling, and whatnot. Critical, critical type spirit, gossiping. Yes, all, those, all, kind of all those type of things are behavioral addictions. So, uh, behavioral addictions and substance addictions, and you struggled with both of those. Very, they, very much so. They probably go together a little they bit. They go hand in hand. And so, how does that happen? You said a habit, you know, to me, as I would think, it sounds like a good thing. Yeah, habits are our friends, but when they turn bad, they become addictions. And what we end up doing is we end up following and wanting pleasure more than thinking long term. And when we desire that pleasure, uh, that can turn into an addiction. Uh, and we don't think long term anymore. And uh, we end up giving ourselves over to that pleasure, whatever it may be, whatever satisfaction we get out of gossip, whatever satisfaction we get out of a drug or whatever, we give ourselves over to that. In fact, the Bible speaks of that exact same phrase when it talks about the be behavioral addictions of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Jude 1.7 it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth and as, as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So we can see the Bible actually talks about how they in Sodom and Gomorrah gave themselves over to this bad behavior. Is it a one-way street? So you give yourself over, that's it? That's not it. Praise the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember back, I think I'd used about everybody up on the planet. I was all alone. It was back in 1996 and mm -hmm. I was all done and um, my girlfriend wouldn't even see me anymore. And I can remember lying face down on my bed, crying out to God, God help me. And he said, you know, 41 years, this hasn't, your way hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he said, it's time to try it my way. And so um, I cried out to him and he said that uh, this is gonna work and I didn't know how it was gonna work. So it was like a three word prayer, huh? Yeah, God help me. Or, or, For three months I prayed that three word prayer. God helped me, and He answered that prayer. So that was really your way of giving yourself over to something else. Exactly. We can't muster up enough ego motiva motivation to make it work. We have to give ourselves over to something or some someone else. You know, I, I like your little book that you've written here, Clean Seven Steps to Freedom, What Every Addict Needs. It's got a picture there of that... Uh, you know, the ladder going up uh, out, of, out of the way you are. You gave yourself over to something, kind of like the, the prodigal son. Um, this is what I want. I want my inheritance. I want this. I want that. And then uh, he changed. He says, make me one of your servants. You kind of had that moment. That's right. That's right. And, uh, and it worked out. God put it in my heart that I was going to turn 180 degrees. And I didn't know. That was my nickname for a while. My family called me 180 for a while because everything changes. Everything I'd done in my life up to that point was wrong. So that's the big first step. I mean, if, if you were talking to someone about a first step, it is, it's coming to that point of saying, I gave myself over to this, but I can give myself over to yeah, something else. Yeah, admitting, acknowledging and admitting that you've got a problem. Well, uh, I encourage you, you've been watching today, uh, New Start at Home. Um, get this book. Go to our website, uh, newstart.com, newstart.com, and get a copy of this book by just following the links. And it's got some real practical help in here. I want to thank you again for coming, being vulnerable, opening up your life here to us. My pleasure. And, uh, you know, what doesn't beat us makes us stronger sometimes. You're able to help people as a result. Yeah. And so will you. We're glad you've joined us, and we hope that as a result of watching today, New Start at Home, you will have a New Start at Home or wherever you are, 
and uh, your life will turn around. You can be on this program someday or be used by God wherever you are. Thanks for joining us.